What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network. You're back from the Understanding Bitcoin Conference in Malta. Uh, this time with no video because we're talking uh, to a couple of cool people that you, of course, know and love here on the World Crypto Network. The Noddle team, uh, the Bitcoin assistant, uh, the most awesome, the most bestest, the most truest of them all, uh, Bitcoin full notes with all the awesome features uh, that you know and love. Uh, so we are joined uh, today by Kato Miner. What's up? How are you doing? Hi, doing very good. It's a perfect conference here in Malta and uh, we, we are looking forward to the workshops on Sunday to help other peers to set up everything. Yeah, yeah absolutely, right? The conference has been outstanding. Uh, what are your thoughts on it, uh, Askiata? Well, it's really awesome just getting together with the people all the time and, and so many interesting discussions. So these events are always great. It's been really awesome so far. And, and tomorrow's special and kind of unique. You don't see that too often in the conferences, so really looking forward to it. Yes, absolutely. So there uh, have been here uh, today and yesterday, uh, especially talks and demos. And uh, Kato Miner, you actually demoed the model. So what exactly did you show and what do you think was the feedback so far? So the main purpose of the demo was to show uh, the variety of lighting wallets you can use with the, with the device, uh, including Zap, uh, Drew Wallet and uh, Ride the Lightning which is uh, our favorite coverage tool for LND. Um, the feedback is outstanding. I didn't expect such a, such a massive good feedback uh, online and offline. People are just coming and uh, everyone wants the box, actually. <laughs> well, and, and they are scarce and they are rare. So, so get your hands on the Noddle now and they sell like fresh breath. <laughs> uh, so what are your thoughts on, on the feedback so far and this, like talking to the people and, and where they actually need to have um, or where they do have problems and, and how the Noddle might solve these? Well, I guess the, the first problem we noticed was a lot of people were surprised because a lot of people didn't know about it. So that's the first problem I think that's, you know, important to fix. So we'll make sure we do something about that. Um, feedback's really great. I think people are warming up to the idea of having a low powered, always on device that's dedicated to that and that you can install with a few clicks or you can actually do command line. So anybody asking questions, and, and I guess that was a theme yesterday, is like, how do you get into it? How do you start? Is it too hard? Is it too difficult? Um, you don't really have to choice, you know, to choose between those options because you can do the one click install and you can do the command line. So you can do everything and it's a tool, you know, to learn. Yeah, I, I, I've read something interesting on Twitter after the demo. Someone said it's still less secure than setting up everything yourself, but actually you can do it if you want. And you can also just connect to the box before you press any button and read the script, uh, see exactly what they do. Usually we try to just follow the best practices from every package to, to install, check the signatures. Uh, we provide our the, the signatures ourselves from a um, signed repository, so you can check that we are checking the right signature with our signature and, and so on. So I think, yeah, it's maybe very marginally less safe if you don't check everything yourself, but since it's totally open, you can. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's the beauty of having completely open source software here with the Noddle is that you don't have to trust. You actually can verify everything. And, and all the stuff here on the Noddle admin, of course, is signed with your PGP key. And then all the stuff in Bitcoin slash Bitcoin and Bitcoin D is signed with the PGP keys of these contributors. Same with L&D, of course. Um, but of course, I think we can always improve that a little bit. And I think one nice... Uh, little uh, protocol or approach uh, would be from uh, Frank Brown uh, that he um, announced, I think 2017 or might, might, might have been 2018, uh, at the Hackers Congress. And that's his um, uh, code chain, right? Um, so Kato, what exactly is that and, and how might we use that for the novel? So code chain uh, actually gives a few advantages uh, compared to traditional PGP signatures of packages. Uh, first of all, you define a, a root of trust, uh, which is usually stored in a DNSSEC server. Uh, DNSSEC guarantees you that um, the information wasn't tampered with on one particular DNS server, since you can check it cryptographically on all the uh, compatible DNS servers in the world. Uh, then the second advantage of code chain is that it requires, I mean, it doesn't require, but the best practice is to have at least two totally independent people signing the repositories. So uh, if one person is constrained to sign something bad, 
if it's not signed by the other one, it will not go through anyway. And uh, each signee is supposed to check uh, the content of the change that, that he's signing. Uh, so we'll be signing with at least three keys in our case. Uh, that, that will be, by the way, released with version 0 0.1.0. Uh, that will be the first signed uh, release with code chain. And um, yeah, so any individual receiving an update on the device, of, of course it will be checked automatically, but you will be able with a common line to check yourself that what you got is what everyone else got and that your device is not a victim of a targeted attack. Yes, very cool. Yeah, and we're looking forward to your coaching. Um, and of course, one really cool thing with Denal is that it's completely empty when you get it. Right? Uh, so, so why is that and, and why did we choose to, um, yeah, have full power here to the user, not just downloading the blocks and verifying themselves, but actually installing Bitcoin themselves. So th there's nothing preloaded. Like, wh what are the attack vectors here that, that we might mitigate? I think maybe it's something like we, we did not talk about much up till now is like, that was a design decision before, like we wanted the, the node to be durable, um, you know, a few years life expectancy. And we started saying we want them to, to build from scratch, you know, download the entire thing. And it's a, it's a decision that then gets, you know, into the design um, versus other options that exist out there where it just shows a different decision. So, so you know, you choose whatever you want to do, but we wanted to offer that to the, to the users. And... I think like you were saying earlier, if you want to start out, you don't know, get your hands dirty a little bit, you do the one click install. But once you get comfortable with the command line, eventually you can scratch it and start back anew with the same device. You get the options to do it. So, you know, if you're scared about like just checking for yourself and verifying for yourself, it's something that you can learn with the tool. It's a learning tool, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I really also like the uh, the documentation of the knowledge at docs.lightning slash solutions.eu, I think. Um, and it really is, of course, still being built out and, and new stuff being added all the time. But already, uh, a lot of the in-depth features are in there. So in-depth tutorials on how you can connect uh, to it with SSH or, or what commands then you can use inside uh, the, the command line itself, right? Uh, so that is always the option, as you say. And even if you mess up and uh, it's your hardware, right? Completely wipe it, reset it, set up your new node, and you can start from scratch and make sure that this time maybe you, you apply the best practices as you know it. But sometimes like you don't necessarily see what goes on behind the scenes or, or the questions that we have, et cetera. And like coming to a conference like that, talking to people who we actually have customers who are here too, who use the Noddle, which is, you know, really nice to meet them. Um, sometimes you, we wrote a few documents that we haven't published yet. You know, maybe they're more in depth. And the question we have is like, how far do you want to go down the command line, you know, stuff? Um, and you don't know what the people want exactly. And you don't know up to what level of detail you want to go. And, and we need the feedback too. So that's something that's really interesting is like, we want to learn from everybody else too. You know, what are the expectations? Where did they struggle? and how we can help them best we can, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, of, of course, there are already uh, cool things working on the Noddle, right? Of course, it's Bitcoin D, uh, there's LND. Um, we have different wallets uh, with, ja with Zap, with Jewel, um, and, of course, one huge feature is of BTC Pay, right? And that all possible to run over Tor, right? So, the features that, that is possible on the Noddle as we speak of right now, um, do, do you think it's, like, or what do you think of the current, like, feature implementation? So we we have uh, we have checked a few boxes. So it's a usable device for a physical store or to use as a remote lighting node for an online store. Uh, there is still a massive amount of work to do to enable all the features of the software which is already installed on it. For example, the Tor support is very basic. We plan to improve it a lot uh, by providing a lot of configuration options while keeping it simple. So you will get like some profiles. Uh, depending on what level of privacy and security you want. Uh, and um, yeah, I think the, the next big goal is to, is to implement new software on it. And uh, for example, you about delivering the device empty to the users, there is also another reason we didn't say yet. 
we don't want to force the user to use one implementation of some service over another one. So for example, today we have LND, tomorrow we may have C Lightning. Uh, we may have an alternative um, version of Bitcoin D proposed on the device or even BTCD, for example. So yeah, we, we want the user to just take the device and do what he wants with it and uh, choose what he wants to run. Yes, right. Because I mean, that is, should be always the case and it would be the case if, if it's just your laptop or something using it, right? You can install whatever you want. And I mean, the model is your hardware, right? It's, it's yours and you can do whatever. But of course, the, the, the job of the model, and especially the user interface, is to guide the user through that process. And uh, what I would really, uh, or what I think is, is a great opportunity here, is that when the user sees that there are different options, he's much more likely to get educated. Where are the trade-offs here? As, so what do you think about, about the education of the different software implementations and, and how the model can help here? Well, I guess that's the goal. You want to show people that they have the option and our guess is that when they're shown different options, they're going to start by themselves to look them up and decide what's best for them. And it's a consensus tool. Well, I mean, we think it's, it is in the sense that people will choose to run the consensus they want. And they'll be active peers. And... We want to do it in the most private possible, you know, way. Um, but that to us is what, you know, a good Bitcoin tool is. Choose what you want. Yeah, exactly. And it, it is the main ethos of, of running a full node, right? It's your fucking rules okay. and no one can force them upon you. And uh, you can enter consensus, you can leave consensus. It, it, it's, it's completely up to you. And of course, that extends within consensus as well. So yes, you might choose a reference client Bitcoin D. But you could also choose something different like BTCD or Bitcoin Knots or something. Um, or of course, then with, with LND or C Lightning, there are trade-offs with both of them. I mean, LND is, is quite, a, quite a rich feature set, but then C Lightning has the plugin architecture, uh, which, is, which is really awesome. So, um, again, but then again, the question is how, let's say, how much choice should the user have? Because software is inherently always restrictions, right? And, and throwing too much at the user at once might confuse them and degrade the entire user experience. So where is the trade-off here? So the, the way I see it is uh, we will keep working with people we know personally, or at least we pre met in some conference. Uh, we will not choose some obscure software we never heard about, like some, I don't know, every implement implementation of the Bitcoin protocol and consensus. Uh, we'll keep it we will keep the choice down to two or three implementations for each brick, let's say, and uh, and we'll try as much as possible to show the trade-offs directly in the user interface. So, for example, today with C Lightning, there are some limitations about the channels you can open between two peers. Um, we need to show that. We need to explain that to the users. Also, the dependencies between the services you can't use Zap with C Lightning. Uh, there are other wallets to use. So, I mean, the choice will be pretty much driven by what UI the user wants to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, right? And um, again, there, there are inherent trade-offs with all of them. And a big part, as we said, is education. Um, but of course, it's, well, I mean, installing stuff on the novel is easy as clicking a few buttons, but that's by far not from it, right? So even if you have Bitcoin desynced and L&D installed, then you have to open channels, right? What the hell are channels? What the hell is liquidity? How can I manage that? Like, where's even the difference between on-chain and off-chain? Like a uh, quote unquote, like target user of the model might be someone who's no clue about all that. Uh, so, so what's the plan on, on making sure that users really understand the power of the software and how they can apply it? I think it's, it's gathering a lot of feedback as to what the users are looking for because you don't necessarily know, but it's true, you, you want to avoid the situation where they do the one-click install it's installed and then they're like, okay, now what, you know? So I guess education is like, what do I do with Bitcoin on a daily basis, whether I'm an individual or a business and how can we potentially help them begin that life and in a way onboard them. Um, and sometimes you think about that, the whole diners club thing where you have a card uh, and you need to educate the, the customers and the merchants and it's a two-sided market 
Um, so you have to approach both crowds and, and just train them to work together and small, start small, a small community and just grow the business together. We want something that's closed, uh, but as large as possible. Yes. It's not universal, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, very true. Also, we have a very active community on Telegram and uh, people are starting to propose to write some documentation themselves based on their own user experience of the device. So this is really great. And uh, we have like a kind of a little contest happening between them of who will get the best channels and best fees from routing channels. That's pretty funny to, to watch. We should probably just open source the documentation. You know, there's the core thing right there, um, right now, and uh, maybe get more people involved in 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 producing the content, reviewing the content, and um, and growing together. You know, yeah, exactly. And this is also very much division of labor, right? I mean, Kato Miner does most of the coding because he's damn good at it, right? And then, uh, yeah, all the coding, <laughs> like a machine. He doesn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and but then right the thing is so for example then with me like i can i can blabber but i can't code uh, so i can do videos i can explain that stuff um and then k miner does not have to do that right and and that extends i mean i'm first and foremost a user of, of Node, right so but that extends to anyone else as well uh, so if, if you can help and by the way for any open source project you don't have to code like you can fix typos and documentation Right? or just educate your friends and peers on, on how you can use that software. And again, making that accessible is really important. So, um, but do you think that we need some like, further incentivization for that uh, so, so that users become active and don't just are like a passive consumer, but actually a, a proactive a peer uh, in, in the software? Uh, do we need some incentives here or do you think it's, it's enough already? You probably need more. I think one of them is like, you just, you just need a little bit of time. There's people who are extremely active who have learned and are helping others and they'll just get more involved as you actually meet them some, you know, and it's fun to be around them. And I think everybody enjoys it. We enjoy it. They enjoy it. And we'll probably have some workshops where we'll get into the finer details of where we're going how we're making it easier and um, just, you know, iterate, 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 show up every day. You know, we want to show up every day. Um, we want them to show up every day and make sure that it's open, that they're welcome, you know, and you can ask whatever you want and you'll get responses anyways. And we'll start doing that this Sunday in this con conference when people are, can just come to see us we can show them the internals of of how everything works and how to verify what what is really done inside the device yeah exactly right so as you said right with the telegram chat i love when that happens when someone like writes me a, a private message or just in some group and, and asks a question and i explain it to them right and then hopefully they understand it then a couple of days later right in, in some chat another person asks a similar question and all of a sudden that peer that i've taught now teaches others right and that is fucking amazing because this means that we're, we're really like growing together and we're it, like it, it's not just that that it's it's a one-sided relationship right because we're all learning together and it's a it's a conversation it's, it's something that we do together and and that is awesome and I've, i really see that a lot in the model chat where like uh, especially when there are like a hundred messages or so that i haven't read and i start reading from top to bottom and then there's like a question as like one of the earlier messages and then i answer that i scroll down a bit and it was already answered by by another one right so that that again is, is, is this community aspect of such open source project is what, what really ties everything together, right? Don't be afraid and, and feel welcome because you are, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and not just welcome, but like really appreciate it because it, it, again, like it's, uh, it's a shit ton of work and, and we need support on, on all fronts, right? And again, it doesn't have to be much, even if it's just answering questions in the chat, right? It doesn't even have to be like some recorded documentation or something. Uh, that is already a lot of, uh, of great support. Um, but then also, right, these, these workshops, I think, are a great opportunity for having interactive um, ways of, of asking a lot of questions and getting good, detailed, and applicable answers right away. Um, so, so what are you thinking on kind of uh, expanding this workshop idea? So we, 
one idea we have is to like organize kind of training sessions around uh, Bitcoin Lightning and the practical applications on the on the node. Uh, we'll try to start basing that in Paris where we live, uh, and then we'll see from from there. Yeah, with I I, I guess sometimes what's needed is is the mix of the okay how do you install the hardware how do you do the infrastructure part how do you just plug it in and what does it mean and what can you do with it and how do you actually do it in a few clicks to i don't know get your your invoice out and how does your customer react to that and if you have staff how do they know how to work it you know and how do you manage authorizations between like a manager and the staff if you want to put that in a store and it's easy, I think most people need help. And that's probably something that we can do easily and just learn from what we're going to see, um, make it better the next time and probably document it and film it and show the people they can do it. Yeah, exactly. That's always one of my major, major points where, that I bring up. I said, if, if you have a local meetup in person, uh, there may be what, 10 people there um, at that one time, at that one place. And yes, we speak information and it's high quality information, but it's, it's kind of locked in time and space. As soon as you record it and you put it in cyberspace, it's safe forever. Uh, and anyone can reach it, not just today, but tomorrow and a year after. And, and that is really fucking powerful. Uh, so I'm very much in favor of just putting a microphone in front of you. It doesn't have to be high quality. Uh, it doesn't have to be the best audio quality, best video quality, or most like streamlined content with like no ands and ums and stuff. It's, it's just, is it, valuable information is it truthful and is it helping others and if so we'll share it because it's not just you that that needs to help it's a bunch of other people as well uh, so so yeah recording the, these workshops and events is is great right and do it again and again and again it gets better and you know i don't know when we'll have the first workshop um you've never been to paris so that's a good uh, opportunity to come um but um we'll, we'll do it this year definitely and uh and we'll learn from that and we'll share it with everybody. Yeah. And also any, any platform slash conference slash hackathon or whatever, who wants to see us and make some live demos, we'll be very happy to come. Yeah, so, so if you have a podcast, if you, if you have a conference or at just a local meetup uh, and, and you want to help your local community to, to be onboarded, I mean, yes, they, they could install everything themselves, right? But of course, that's again tricky. Uh, so, so here having such a plug and play solution is always an, a nice first step. But again, it's not everything. Uh, so, so not just uh, do we need your help for, for spreading the word about the novel, but also then on the education part, right? And, uh, and especially, for example, so if you have a restaurant and you go there every day and, and you might want to spend your Satoshis there, well, yes, of course, they first and foremost need to run a node, right? But then also like getting them educated enough on, on how to use that exactly. And then I, I, I would say that's, that's also something that we spoke earlier that then when we have these businesses, and especially restaurants, uh, that then uh, do accept Bitcoin, actually supporting them and going there. Uh, so what, how do you think can we incentivize Bitcoiners to go to these bars and, and restaurants and entrepreneurs that actually do accept Bitcoin? There's so many things to do. It's like publicize it, you know, make, you know, make it known that people can go there. Um, and spend their bitcoins, use it, make it a nice experience, learn from the pain points, and we're going to do a lot of learning for sure. And eventually, we 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 should get there and make it known to the bar owners, the restaurant owners, the business owners that they have untapped potential clients too, people who will come for the experience, people who will come because they're committed to Bitcoin, and that there's more peers out there that they probably want to interact with. And um, it's a real life experience kind of thing. It's like, there's people interested. Just put them together, make it known, advertise it. Um, there's, a, there's a big community and it's growing. Yeah, and I think the, the Bitcoin community is uh, much more mobile and worldwide than people imagine. For example, I see on, the, on this conference chat, uh, people are just ch exchanging addresses of uh, restaurants and hotels who accept Bitcoin. And uh, most of these new customers going to these places are not from here, they are from the other side of the world. So yeah, I think people don't, don't imagine the impact that it can have to accept Bitcoin in, in some business. 
Yeah, exactly. And I mean, for me, for me personally, any time that I see any service uh, accepting Bitcoin, I go there. Right? Um, I might not buy much, but maybe like a coffee or might not even buy anything at all, but just talk to the people and again, con communicate because that helps on several fronts. Because for example, so let's assume you go to a restaurant and you, and you buy your meal and you pay with Bitcoin. Then the entrepreneur knows that there are actually Bitcoiners out there. Right? It's a positive feedback loop that then again justifies his investment and in, in his time and effort of getting things going. Right? It shows him that this is actually usable, that people actually want to use this. Uh, and of course, it also helps him to get skin in the game, right? Because then he's actually holding Satoshis. And thus, he's much more incentivized to keep on doing this even further. Uh, and again, it's a great, uh, commun or a great opportunity for a communication and for finding out the pain points. Hey, how do you like it so far? What, what was your experience? Where, where were you struggling? How, what were the problems that you faced? And how did you solve them? Or what are the unsolved problems that you might need help with? Uh, so I, I guess that's, it's, it's always nice then to, to get those together that are of the same mindset. And I think when you see a Bitcoin accepted sticker, uh, like you know that the person there is, is someone that might be worth talking to. You get to talk to people. Isn't that fabulous? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's great. And like, and that's why the, these conferences are, are so great. And you come out of it really always like super excited. And you have to bring that back to where you are and where you live. And that's why we want to do more locally. And that's why we travel a ton too. Um, and we'll do more conferences like that this year and, and just spread the world, the, the word to the world. <laughs> See? Yeah. It's funny how after 30 years of internet, people were staying in front of their computers and now we are going back again to meet in person because Bitcoin. <laughs> Yes, very much so. Okay, we, we've already covered uh, quite a lot. So maybe uh, how, how about a little tease? Uh, what are you tinkering on and, and what will be ready in, of course, two weeks? So the, the next features to come are, of course, the much anticipated Electron Personal Server. And whoop, whoop. Uh, it's already running uh, here on my personal node, which is with me at the conference. Uh, it just needs some packaging work now and some UI uh, work because uh, Electron Personal Server is a great product, but it requires a lot of configuration. Uh, it's definitely not for every user, um, and we have to figure figure out how to make it right in the web interface so it's uh, understandable. I guess it's a good opportunity to, to tell people that they should log issues, and if they want to help out, eventually that'll be something that's interesting. Yeah, don't be scared. Uh, we are not using GitHub because we self-host everything, so we have a GitLab. Don't be scared to come register on the GitLab and open issues. Today we have exactly zero. Uh, <laughs> so that, that would be really helpful for us. Yeah, yes, exactly. Be active, right? Give feedback. Um, and and it doesn't have to be like, uh, like criticism, but just how are you using this? What are you trying to solve? Which problems do you have? And why do you think that a novel can solve it? And maybe can we do it a bit better? Right? Uh, so for your very individual use case, that is exactly what we're looking for here. Right? It's, it's you that, that is the novel, right? It's, it's for you and, and by you in a sense, right? Uh, so, so definitely contributing back is, is very appreciated and it will make your experience a lot better. Uh, so if, if you have a feature request, well, jump in the Telegram group, right? Open an issue on GitLab. Um, and, and be active. And, and again, that does not just go for the novel. That goes for any open source project. Yeah, I mean, you, basically you're doing it for yourself and someone else might be interested and it might be possible for them to, to have something fixed and you eliminate the guesswork. Because how are you supposed to guess what people want? You know, it's much richer, much smarter to have 100 people on a certain topic than two, three, four, you know? So it's just bringing everybody together is a lot smarter. Yeah, and, and we are doing the same ourselves when I probably accept for Bitcoin D, for every little piece of software that runs on the node, we opened issues on, uh, on their Git and, uh, and usually they replied and uh, did something about it. So yeah, it's a great way of sharing. Yeah, it is. 
Okay, um, so that was a great conversation. I really liked it. Again, a lot of fun uh, here with the novel. Uh, and it's already awesome. And it looks like it's just going to be better and better and better with every update. Uh, so I'm always excited when I see in the, in the GUI that, oh, update might be available. And then you pulled it from GitLab. <laughs> so that is awesome. Uh, so any, any last words, anything that appears so I would like to know? I think it's only been four months and it has been updated several times. It's fast. There's a lot of stuff happening, so it's super exciting. And maybe the next things you will talk about a little more, and uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll have it on the WCN as uh, a lot more education. Yeah, definitely. And we have to, to work on the documentation, better integration of the documentation in the website into Nodo itself, because it's also a hosting platform, so we can just include all the documentation locally on your device. You don't even need to leave logs on our servers when you read it. Yeah, perfect. Okay, Piers, you heard it here first. Uh, get the Noddle, of course, uh, because it's fucking awesome. Uh, so, Piers, uh, check out Noddle.it and see you on the next show. Bye-bye. <laughs>